am delighted to be here. I am Jim Rogers. Uh, I am delighted to be here with the International Youth Fellowship. Uh, I, Paul has asked me to talk a bit about growing up and how to be successful and how to be a leader in the future. And the main answer is be true to yourself, do what you love, and then you can be successful at anything. If you love gardening, you should be a gardener. Your teachers, your friends, your parents will say, don't be a gardener. But if you love gardening, you should become a gardener. You will never go to work a day in your life. You will wake up every morning and have a lot of fun. And someday you will have a chain of garden shops all over the world. You'll be listed on the New York Stock Exchange. You will be the richest person in your country. And all of your friends and parents and teachers will call you and say, oh, oh, how did you know? Uh, so the main thing is, I'm not suggesting you should become a gardener, but I am insisting that you should find out what you love the most and then pursue it, no matter what it is, because that will lead to success, because happy people are the most successful people. And by the way, even if you're not successful, you don't care because you're happy, but you will be happy and you're more likely to be successful and successful people are inspirations for all of us and certainly can help lead and change the world. So the main thing is to be true to yourself. Figure out what you love, what you love the most, and then pursue it. I have two teenage children and I am, I've known this all my life, but I'm really learning it with them because I have seen them tell me that they really, something they really want to do. I may not think it's right, but I realize as they've gotten older that it is the right thing for them to do. And some of the things that I have told them to do, for instance, my older daughter, when she was young, I thought she should learn to play football because everybody should know about football. I took her to football lessons and she ran away. I literally had to race and chase her. The next week, the coach put them all on a line and said, when I say go, you all run up to that line. <clears throat> and he said go, and they all ran except my daughter. I now realize she did not want to play football and I should not, I should not have been trying to insist that she, she play football. She has astonishing at other things. There was something when she was four, she came up on the stage when I was making a speech and she wowed the place. She just wowed the place and came back for encore. And I now realize that she's extremely good on stage and that she has a stage presence and a manner and she didn't know she loved it. I certainly didn't know she loved it, but I should have realized at an earlier age, but I'd never been a parent before, so I didn't know. I should have realized, okay, this, this kid does not want to play football, but she's extremely good on stage. So whether she's going to be an MC or an actor or whatever, let her be on stage. So to emphasize for all of you, no matter what it is, Try to figure out your passion, what you love doing, and what you and you're probably going to be very good at that, and then pursue it, no matter how absurd it may feel to other people, especially if it feels absurd to other people. If other people laugh at you, you're doing the right thing. So pursue it. Do not listen to other people. <clears throat> listen to your own inner strength, your own passion. And please, please pursue that. Some of you will do well in school if because that's what you love. Great, do it. But some of you will not do well in school. Don't worry. Do not worry. The world is full of people who became successful, became leaders, and inspirational, etc., who did not do well in school. So I certainly encourage and am proud that my children do well in school, but it is not. It is not the end all and be all. I, I, if you only remember one thing from today, please remember to find your passion and then pursue it, pursue it wholeheartedly, no matter, no matter what it is. Now, there are a couple of things that I'm doing with my kids that I think are important. One, uh, to me, it was extremely important that my children speak a second language. In my case, I wanted it to be Chinese because in my view, China, Chinese is going to be an extremely important language, probably the 
first or second most important language in the 21st century. So for me, I insisted and pr pursued making sure my children spoke a second language very well. Now, some kids speak three or four languages, uh, but to me, it was more important that they speak two perfectly rather than they speak four bad. If you can speak four perfectly, by all means, please do it, do it, do it. Because in your lifetime, especially in your lifetime, language is going to be extremely important. Yes, they have devices now that will translate for you, but that is never nearly as good as speaking it yourself and understanding it yourself. If you're on an elevator and people are talking and they see you and they say, oh, that, that person will never un understand what we're saying, but you understand what they're saying, you will learn huge amounts. And you can, by the way, at the end of the elevator, you shock them because you speak up and talk about what they were saying. And then they will be absolutely stunned and shocked. So it's important. In my view, it's important in the 21st century that you speak a second language and speak it extremely well uh, so that people don't even know you're, you're a foreigner if you're speaking to them on the phone, for instance. So please do that, <clears throat> which leads me to something else, which is very important for every person in the world. I hope you will spend some time out of your own country. Uh, it will teach you a lot about yourself. It will teach you a lot about the world. When I was a student, I went to university far away, uh, 1,500 kilometers away. It was a very well-known university, and I had a lot of fun there. But the most important part of that experience for me was going far, far away from home. I was amazed at how different things were and how different people were and how different they thought. Then I went to a university in a foreign country, the same thing. Sure, there were great universities, and I learned from my professors and my classes, but the most important thing for me was learning about the world, but also learning about myself, because I had to learn about myself when I was in this foreign place where people thought differently and did different things. And in your lifetime, especially in your lifetime, it's going to be a very important to know about the world. There was an English poet once. He won the Nobel Prize for Literature, for what that's worth. His name was Rudyard Kipling. And it, he had a poem called The English Flag. In that poem, he said, what can he know of England who only England knows? In other words, you'll know more about England if you know about the world and about other countries than if you never leave England. And that's all you know. And that is an extremely important lesson. You will know more about your own country, or know what about yourself, but you will know more about your own country if you spend some time outside of your own country. Um, you can always go back. You might spend a couple of years in another country and never go back. That's okay too, if that's what you love. But most people who do that do go back, but they have a broader understanding of their own country and of the world and how they all fit together than if they never leave their own country. I grew up in a small village. Many people never leave there and they're quite happy. They're quite happy never leaving, which is fine. But I will tell you that for your development, for everybody's development, as citizens, as anything, as leaders, it is much, much, much better if you know the rest of the world. And part of the problem that we all, many of us have is we are afraid of the rest of the world. We're afraid of foreigners. I've driven around the world a couple of times and often it would happen. I would be here and people would say, well, where have you been? I said, well, oh, we were here. And they said, oh my gosh, those are horrible, terrible, dangerous, bloodthirsty people. You're lucky to be alive. And I, of course, said, what? We had great fun. We danced, we sang, we did, we did everything. We had a very, very good time together. Then they would say, well, where are you going next? And we'd say, oh, we're going here. Oh my God, you're going to get killed. And now you are going to get killed. Those are horrible, bloodthirsty, dangerous people. And of course, when you get there, you sing and you dance and you have dinner. And everybody's happy and pleased and having a very good time together. Politicians especially love to say that foreigners are bad, especially when things go bad in a country. This is any country and throughout history. 
the politicians or the leaders try to take it out on, they blame the foreigners. It's very easy to blame the foreigners. They have different skin, different language, different food, different clothes, different religion, different everything. So it's very easy to blame the foreigners. It's not my fault. It's the foreigners. It's the evil foreigners. So you must be aware of that. Yes, there are evil people all over the world, but not just because they're foreign. Often they, you will learn and gain and benefit a lot from trading with, interacting with the foreigners. So please, if you can spend some time outside of your own country, no matter what your country is, or no matter where you go, in a year or two outside of your own country, because it will make you a better leader you'll have more understanding, more awareness of yourself. And by the way, I keep emphasizing yourself. We all need to know ourselves, which is very hard. Many people spend their whole lives and never, they don't know their passions and they're not aware of their passions. But they never learn them. They do what their parents said or who knows what they did. And it is extremely important to try to figure out what you really love. For instance, when you turn on the inner, the, you could, computer, where do you go? Which sites do you go to? If you watch TV, what kind of TV shows do you? If you go to a doctor's office and there are 500 magazines in the office, which ones do you read? Try to figure out your own passions. I know many people who never, develop, never know their own passions. And if they do, they never develop them because they're afraid. Oh my gosh, that's not what I should do. It is what you should do. I cannot emphasize to you enough. It is what you should do. Figure out your own passion. You'll be happy. You'll be successful. You will be an inspiration. You'll be a leader and help many, many other people, young and old, develop their lives and their countries and the world. So I encourage all of you to follow your passions. I encourage all of you to leave your own country for a while. I encourage all of you to learn a foreign language if you can. So uh, I hope that all of you can figure out these things for yourself. Hope you don't just listen to me because the best lessons of life are the ones you learn for yourself. Uh, I am often asked what we should study at university. And I repeat, I say, figure out what you love, no matter what it is, and pursue it, no matter what it is. And I say that the best things for me at university were history and philosophy. And people say, no, no, we want to be rich. We want to be rich. I say, if you want to be rich, you, maybe you should think about history and philosophy. History will tell you that the world is always changing. And what you need to know is first understand that. And if you understand history, you might be able to figure out how the world is going to change. And if you can change with it, you will become very, very successful. You can pick any year in history, 1900. Everything that people believed in 1900 was not correct in 1915. Everything that people believed in 1930 was not correct 15 years later. And if you could just study history, you'll know that. But if you just read a lot, you'll know that, that the world is always changing. Everything is changing. Uh, and it's going to continue that way. If you understand history, you might be able to figure out how it's changing. Unfortunately, one of the most important lessons of history is people do not learn the lessons of history. I know that history is smarter than I am, and I know that history is smarter than most of us. So if you know some history, it will help you understand where we are and maybe where we're going. And I, I loved philosophy because, and I was not very good at philosophy when I was at university. In later years, I understood. I said, oh, now I understand what they were talking about. The philosophy will help you think. It's very hard to think for yourself, no matter what. Everybody turns on the computer, turns on the television. And if they say the sky is blue, everybody says, oh, the sky is blue. They don't even go and look out the window to see if the sky is blue. If you study philosophy, at least it helped me learn to think. And if you can learn to think for yourself, which is very hard, I assure you it's very hard. But if you can think for yourself, you're going to probably go very far in life. 
So those are a few lessons that I'm trying to teach my children. I'm trying to teach them to question everything, even me, to ask questions, look under the rocks to see if what they're being told is correct or not, see if they agree with it. I've told my children to, when they can, to watch TV shows from four or five countries because every country thinks that what they're broadcasting is accurate. If you watch Russian TV, everything they think they're saying, they think is absolutely correct and accurate. But if you watch Japanese TV and Chinese TV and American TV and British TV and German TV, they too, they all think that what they say is correct. It can't all be correct. So I've tried to teach them to watch news from various countries and then they have to figure out in their own heads, oh, this is what's really going on in the world. Don't just listen to one source because most <clears throat> nobody's exactly right. And you, if you want to be successful, you <laughs> must be able to think for yourself and figure out what's really going on in the world and realize that it's going to change and how it's going to change. So I hope all of you, uh, Follow your passions, no matter what they are. I hope you leave your own country for a while. I hope you learn foreign language. I hope you learn some history. And I hope you learn to think for yourself. When I was five years old, you know, now we would all probably put in jail if we put a five-year-old to work like that. Mm -hmm. But I was picking up the empty bottles at the baseball games. And the lady paid me a little bit. And then when I was six, I started my own business selling uh Coca-Colas and peanuts at the baseball games. And I had little boys working for me. There were no little girls around in those days uh, that we knew anyway. So we were all playing and then we, I was paying them virtually nothing, these three-year-olds and four-year-olds to work for me. As I say, we would all go to jail. I'm sure now because of child labor laws, et cetera. But in those days in this country town, nobody bothered or, or cared. Uh, what I would say to myself, most of all, is uh, looking back in my youth, I would say, you must perfect a language. Uh, I wish I had perfected my, my a foreign language better than I did. I can, maybe that's one reason I'm doing it for my children. So if I could go back and do it over again, I guess I would have perfected Chinese at an early age. Uh, and maybe I would have even moved to China now. I went back to America and I had a fantastic life in New York, et cetera, and traveling around the world, et cetera. But perhaps if I'd stayed in China, because I saw what was happening, maybe I would be successful now. But I've certainly had a good time and China was a very good place. And I want to go back to what I said to you, please spend time, more time outside of your own country. Well, we were certainly not rich. We lived in a very backward, uh, place, backwards place. Um, I never thought that we were poor. I, when I went to the, when I went to the north, northeast, I, I realized, oh gosh, we must have been poor. We certainly weren't rich. Let's put it that way. We weren't poor, but we certainly were not rich. Uh, I never felt poor or anything else. You know, and as I've traveled around the world, I see many kids I have everywhere. None of them think they're poor. I see kids out there playing with, they make up their own games. They're quite having a very good time. So most children don't know they're poor unless somebody tells them that, that they're poor, um, looking, looking back on life. Uh, so I was having a good time. I was a good childhood. I was very pleased and happy. Uh, I guess perhaps, certainly when I went to college, it was a shock, uh, but I adjusted and, and the shock was, you know, any shock like that is complicated, but I, I did adjust and succeed at both of my universities. Uh, at one point, I guess, when I went to Wall Street, I, at one point, I lost everything, uh, which was a bit of a shock. <laughs> I, I had, I'd had a great success, and I began to think, oh my gosh, this is easy. I'm going to be very, very, very rich, because I had a great success when everybody else was failing. Well, six months later, I'd lost everything. That was, not a, that was not a lot of fun. It certainly taught me how much I did not know. <clears throat> and it taught me don't ever be arrogant. Don't ever think you're smart because you know, the world is going to show you, hey, you're not so smart. 
Let me show you. Uh, so be very, very careful if you get arrogant and start thinking you know a lot, especially, and I don't know what, whatever field you go into, but the world's going to show you it's not that easy. Uh, I guess those, that was certainly one of the difficult periods. Um, obviously, when I was going around the world, you know, once I was, we were held hostage for nine days in the middle of Africa, that was certainly complicated uh, and, and bewildering because uh, the guy kept asking for money. We finally convinced him we didn't have money and he let us go. That was certainly a complicated period. Uh, whenever you go around the world, it's con unless you go on a tour or something, but if you drive, and, and that's what I urge people, if you travel, to travel on your own, cross borders in the jungle, find your own place to eat, find your own place to sleep, that will teach you about the world much more than taking a tour. So please do it on your own. But it's also complicated because you could get killed. Many people who try to travel don't make it for a variety of reasons. It's, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. Now, I've spent five years traveling around the world and I'm alive. I still have both arms, both legs, etc. But, you know, every day I was trying to be aware and paying attention because I knew I could get killed one way or the other. So I guess, although they were glorious, glorious times, those five years, they were, I was always trying to be alert and concentrate so that I would stay alive. And I do remember, <clears throat> even the bad times, I always remember thinking, well, you know, you learn something from bad times. When things are difficult and hard, you learn something. You learn something about the world, about the country, about the experience, you learn about yourself. So I certainly didn't like bad times, but in retrospect, I knew I was learning. But <clears throat> I told you about what I'm doing with my children. Uh, the single word that I would like, if I could only teach my children one word, it would be persevere never give up. Uh, we all know people who are smart, who are not successful. We all know people who are educated, who are not successful. We know people who are beautiful, who are not successful. We know people who are talented, who are not successful. The people who are successful are the nuts who never give up, no matter what happens. They never, ever give up. They are persistent. So as I, to repeat, if I, if I can only teach my children one word, it's persevere. Never, ever give up. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. So I, I hope that all of you and your, what you said about teenagers, yes, it's, it's not just teenagers, it's, it's grown-ups as well sometimes. Uh, but if you look out the window and you see the successful people, you will see they're the ones who just never gave up, kept trying, kept trying, kept trying, no matter bad, how bad things got. So I hope, not just Koreans, but everybody, I hope you will figure out something and not give up. You know, if you wake up when you're 75 and you never even tried, you're going to be very, very sad. It is better to have tried and not succeeded because at least you know you tried. You're not going to wake up one day and say, you know, I always wanted to be a gardener and I never even tried. <clears throat> to be a gardener. So my, no matter what it is, please try it. Because if you fail, you will learn something and you will never have regrets that you failed. That young Koreans will not give up. I hope they will continue to try. And to repeat, you learn a lot when you fail. The world is full of very successful, important people who have failed at least once or twice. And the ones who become very happy and very successful are the ones who keep trying. They don't give up, even if they fail once or twice. So don't worry about failure. I know, listen, I've had my failures. I didn't, I tell you, I went bankrupt. I lost, didn't go bankrupt, but I lost everything in my early days in, in the investment world. It was not fun. But, you know, I guess I could have gone off and become a priest or I could have committed suicide or I could have run away. But uh, fortunately, I didn't have enough sense to do all that stuff. I kept working. I woke up every day and kept trying. And eventually it led to success. Now, your question of how do you figure it out? <clears throat> uh, some of them were accidents, like my career. Um, 
I mentioned to you before, if, if you can observe your own actions, what do you do every day? What do you pursue? What do you read about? What do you watch? What do you talk to your friends about? Maybe it's fashion. Maybe it's cars. I don't know what it is. Um, some people are passionate about cars. They know everything about cars. Well, pursue that. Pursue that. Don't just continue it as a passion or as a hobby. Pursue it. If you love fashion, go and get a job, even if it's as a clerk in a fashion store or a high-end shop selling high-end clothes or fashion. Pursue it, even if you have to start at the bottom. Do not worry. Now, I have no idea what your passions are, and I don't want to know. You have to figure it out. But if you can figure out <clears throat> what you talk to your friends about or what you watch or what you read about, try to pursue that. If it's fashion, go downtown in Seoul. I guess you're in Seoul or wherever you are. <clears throat> get, a shop as, get a job as a clerk <clears throat> in a shop and see if you really love it and it develops, et cetera. Don't worry about starting at the bottom. It's good to start at the bottom. You will learn more if you start at the bottom of whatever field it is. If it's cars, go down and get a job as a mechanic or as a sales assistant, whatever it happens to be, and see if you really love it. Because if you really love it, and if you start as a sales clerk at Chanel, someday you, they're going to be writing stories about you in the fashion industry because you rose from a sales clerk to the head of fashion companies, major fashion companies. So don't worry. Try it. And don't tell me <clears throat> what it is. Think about it yourself. Think about what you're interested in. And don't be afraid to pursue it. <clears throat> even if your parents say no, 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 no. Even if your friends say no, 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 no. Pursue it and see how it works out. And maybe in a year or two or three, you'll be on your way. Well, you're right. <clears throat> Money does not uh, ensure happiness. There are many people who, I mean, you, I'm sure you know, there are many people who have money who are not terribly happy. Uh, and there are many people who are very happy with little money or no money uh, because they're doing what they love. Uh, what is true happiness? I, I repeat, it's the people who wake up every day and start having fun. Uh, you may say, oh, gosh, she's a gardener. She could not be happy. But she may be the happiest person you know because she wakes up every day, never goes to work, just wakes up and has fun, thinks about how she can make her garden better or, or the plants better, whatever it happens to be. And you can be extremely happy. I would try to, you know, there. you must have heard of Honda. Well, Honda was a, an old man who liked motorcycles. Uh, he was just, it was, it was after the Second World War and Japan had been destroyed by the war. But this guy liked motorcycles. Well, you know the rest of that story. I mean, he's no longer alive, but he didn't know he was just a motorcycle mechanic. You know, but he had a wonderful, wonderful time and a great, great, great success. But the world is full of people like that. I'm sure the people at Samsung, I don't know how they started. But there are many, many great success stories of people who started off and what many of their friends must have said, ah, who cares about that? That's not an important job. That's not an important life. They didn't know. They didn't care. They were just having fun. Guy who bought McDonald's. You've heard of McDonald's, I'm sure. You know, he, he found these guys making hamburgers, having fun at it. So he, he invested with them, bought them out. And you know the rest of that story. He loved making hamburgers. So figure out what it is, no matter how foolish it is. Maybe you love fried silkworms. My goodness, I love fried silkworms. Hard to get in Korea now. Maybe you'll go into a shop for fried silkworms. Only if you love it. Only if you love it. I love fried silkworms, but I don't know how to make them. So I'm not going to come to Korea and start a shop. But figure out what it is. And maybe you'll have a shop selling fried silkworms and ancho. Oh, my gosh, I love anchovies, too. So figure out what you love and pursue it. No matter how focus and concentration and trying to observe what you do 
and where you do it and why you do it. Well, yes, figure out your own passion and pursue it. See the world, learn a language, but most important, figure out what makes you happy and pursue it because those are the people who are most successful in life because they love what they're doing. And I want to repeat, Paul, even if they're not successful, even if they're not on the cover of the magazines, they don't care, they're happy. What do they care? I know lots of people who are somewhat successful, who are full of tension and worries and problems, even though they have some money, you know, pursue what you love and you will be happy. And as I said, even if you're not, you don't care. I mean, even if you're not successful, you don't care you'll be happy, but you're much more likely to be successful. And don't be like those other Korean teenagers who give up. Please do not give up. Please pursue something that you love. If you can remember one word, it's the word I teach my children, persevere, persevere, persevere. Thank you. Thank you.